Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Back for Blood. So we're, go we're going to start with some optimization for Windows. And after that, we will go inside of the game to make sure that you have the proper parameter for this game. So the first thing that you need to do is write game mode in your search bar. Make sure that you're using your game mode. Uh, it's really important. You want like to use the best score on your processor uh, when you run a game. You want to remove those random tasks in Windows. So you want to make sure that all your resources are focusing on the game. Also, Xbox Game Bar, uh, I recommend to remove it and don't use any overlay, the Discord overlay, AMD, NVIDIA, stuff like that. Um, it's causing stuttering in this game, so just remove everything and it will help you. After that, for capture, make sure that your background recording is at off. Your recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend is the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Uh, I can't show you right now because I'm using now a Radeon on my PC. But if you have like an NVIDIA video card, uh, Series 1000 or above, just write graphic setting and you will have this option in your search bar. Uh, put this one at on. You will need to restart your computer uh, to make sure this one is applied. And normally it can give you like 2 to 4% boost in your FPS. But also it can stabilize your FPS if you have some random... Uh, uh, stuttering so now the driver also make sure that you have the latest driver if you're using radian software go with the latest radian uh, drivers same thing with nvidia even intel if you have an intel uh, integrate gpu on your cpu go on their website make sure that you update your driver don't just use the uh, search bar from windows they will provide you like some generic driver uh back for blood is a big game so you will have probably dedicated driver for this game and it will help you a lot with your fps another thing that i want to mention it's the energy so write energy in your search bar go to power option uh, make sure that you're using balance or high performance, really important. Don't go with power saver, uh, eco mode and stuff like that. Normally when you're using a desktop computer, you will not have this issue. But uh, when you're using a laptop, I saw a couple of laptops, even when you plug in the wall, they don't change your power option. So you're still at eco mode. So you're losing a lot of performance so, and also a lot of FPS. So really important to use balance and high performance. So now let's we will go inside of the game. I will show you what parameter to change to make sure that you have the most of FPS and you still get a nice quality uh, image. So let's go in back for blood. So now the graphic parameter. So first of all, window mode. Make sure that you're playing full screen. Uh, really important. Uh, I did a comparison between like borderless and window and I was gaining a lot of stuttering so really important to play full screen Also, make sure that your target GPU is the good one normally on the desktop PC You will not have this issue, but sometimes on, on a laptop uh, Games are getting confused between your GPU in your laptop and your integrate GPU So make sure that you have the good one after that, for the screen resolution, make sure that you're playing native resolution. So it really depends on your monitor. If you have like a 2K monitor, 4K or 1080p, whatever, make sure that you're using the proper one. For anti-aliasing, I don't use anti-aliasing in this game. Uh, I feel like TAA is a bit too blurry. If you don't like aliasing, go with FXAA. But when you put the anti-aliasing at off, everything is clear, crystal clear in this game. And also you will gain a nice 5% boost in your FPS. So that's why I'm putting anti-aliasing at off. Motion blur, I just remove it from any like first person first person shooter game. Sorry, uh, I really don't like this effect, and it will not give you FPS. Chromatic aberration, put this one at off. It will help you with two percent boost in your FPS. And the adaptative FX quality, put this one at off. After that, you have the field of view. It's really depend on your preference. I'm playing at 90 in all my FPS game, so that's why I'm going with 90. But if you want to put the uh, the field of view at 120, you will see that you will lose FPS because you're rendering a lot more in front of you. So it really depends where you are in my guide and how many FPS that you aim for. But uh, yeah, you can definitely do some tests with your field of view. I don't use V-Sync. Uh, I have a free sync monitor, so I don't need it. Uh, if you have free sync, G-Sync, put your V-Sync at off. If you don't like tiering, uh, definitely go with on with your V-Sync, but you will create a, some input lag. Uh, so really depend the like what you want. But honestly, it's, it's more like a PvE game, so uh, it's not it's, it's not Counter Strike, you know, or Valorant. So definitely you can use V-Sync if you want to. 
For the limit FPS, I'm putting this one at custom. I'm putting 168. I want to stay in my free sick range. So that's why I'm using that. Also, you can't use limit FPS if you have some issue with uh, your thermal in your uh, computer. For an example, you have a 60 Hertz monitor, you're rendering 100 FPS and it's causing a lot of heat. You're getting throttled, stuttering and stuff like that. Limit your FPS and it will, it, it will help you with your thermal. After that, for the quality, I'm going with custom because we're going to change it manually. The first one is post-processing. I'm putting this one at low. It's great. Like, I feel my game is blurry when I use post-processing. And also, you can get a nice 5% boost when you put this one at low. So, that's why I'm going with low with this one. Texture quality... Um, it really depends on your VRAM, so your, the amount of VRAM that you have on your GPU. So 4 gig of VRAM and more go with Epic, 3 gig at high, 2 gig at medium, and less than 2 gig go with low. Uh, for effect quality, I'm putting this one at low. You will see uh, when you start the game, it feels your FPS will look alright, but when you will start fighting with waves of zombie and stuff like that, uh, you're going to get some big drops in your FPS, and effect quality will help you a lot. Put this one at low and you will stabilize a lot your FPS. Shadow quality and foliage quality, those one, I uh, don't go with low. Depending, again, on your computer, if you're playing on a laptop with an integrated GPU, probably you will need to put this one at low. But your image quality will decrease a lot. So I recommend medium because here you can get 7% boost. And when you go medium to low, you're just getting a nice 1% boost. So that's why... Medium is a compromise in this game, and it's pretty much the same thing with foliage. You get a 5% boost when you go at medium, but the medium to low, it's another like 1% again uh, boost in your FPS. So the compromise here is medium. Uh, I'm not using HDR. I don't have an HDR screen. Uh, I, I know in some games, sometimes they put HDR by default at on, and when you remove it, you're getting like FPS. So maybe test it. Uh, because maybe you're losing F F FPS with HDR if it's at on and you're really using it with your monitor. Uh, so definitely do some tests here. And after that, you have the uh, advanced setting graphic API. For me, I'm using the DirectX 11. It was more stable and I was getting more FPS. DirectX 12 uh, was a bit weird and also I'm, I was getting some crash. So that's why I'm using this one. And I'm using the Fidelity FX sharpening. I feel like the game is much more clear, clearer. Uh, it's it's really like sharp when you play. So that's why I'm using it. The last one is the resolution scale. Make sure that you're using 100%. Uh, again, if you're struggling with your FPS, don't touch your resolution. Play native and go a little bit lower with your resolution scale. Put something like 95 or 90. Uh, don't go under 90 because after that you will feel like that your game will be blurry and you will see like uh, artifact and stuff like that. So don't go too crazy with the resolution scale. So this is pretty much it for the guide for uh, Back for Blood. If you have any questions, just come in in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.